today I want to talk to you about shaping and what it is and why it's something that you should definitely be doing with your service dog, even if you're not a huge clicker trainer yourself. See, shaping is, the full term for shaping is shaping in successive approximations. And it's basically where we take a behavior, split it down into its smallest little pieces, and then reinforce each tiny baby step towards our final goal. So what we do is we reinforce small approximations that slowly get us towards our final goal. So a lot of clicker trainers will talk about their shaping staircase. And this is straight out of our clicker training ebook, which you can get by following the link in the description. And so if you'll notice here, I have a staircase, right? And the way that we think about this is if my final goal behavior is to maybe get in a box and lay down, which is exactly what I'm gonna shape with Finn in the moment, then it goes at the top of my staircase. And at the bottom would be something as tiny as noticing the box is there, right? And then each step brings me closer to my final goal. So I might have look at the box, move towards the box, smell the box, touch the box, um, put one foot in, two feet in, three feet, et cetera, et cetera, until we have a dog who gets in and lays down in the box. So I like to think about this as kind of a glorified game of hot and cold, where, you know, if the dog gets warmer, I click, and if the dog gets colder, I don't click. And this is the really kind of the meat of clicker training, of how we really like to teach behaviors. And shaping is how we can get any animal to do anything that it is physically and mentally incapable of doing. So we're going to do a little bit of dev demonstration here in just a minute. But before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about why you should be shaping. See, shaping is, sounds like a lot of work, and sometimes it is, especially in the beginning when you're not really used to it, um, especially when it's something like get in a box and lay down. So I actually have a box, and we're going to shape Finn to get in it and lay down. And this is something that I might be able to get faster by putting a food lure in, his nose, in front of his nose and luring him into the box, right? I might be able to get this behavior faster if I lure but what I don't get if I lure this behavior is all of the benefits that come with shaping. And for anybody who wants to know why I'm going to teach him to lay in this box, it's one, because it's something he's never done before and I wanted to demo a behavior that Finn doesn't know. And secondly, it's a good way to get your dog used to curling up in a tight space, which as we all know is something service dogs have to do a lot, right? They have to squeeze themselves into tiny places. So I'm, that's what we use box for, is kind of teaching the dogs to curl up into tiny balls. But if I lure this behavior, I might be able to get it faster. But then I lose out on some of the really cool benefits that come along with shaping. And those include that it will teach your dog to be a better problem solver, which is of course something we really need out of our service dogs. We need them to be good problem solvers. It teaches them to be confident and optimistic. It teaches them to be flexible with their, um, their learning abilities. It teaches them to be tolerant to frustration because what if they were sure you were going to click and then you didn't. So shaping is really an invaluable thing to do with your service dog, even if all you're going to shape are fun tricks like roll over and play dead and, um, you know, sit up or something like that. But because shaping teaches your dog to be confident and optimistic and a really great problem solver and really engaged and really focused, it's really worth your time. So this is not something Finn has ever done before, although he has had shaping sessions before. So this is not his first experience with the clicker and it is not his first experience being shaped, but it is his first experience learning to get in a box and lay down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the box down and then I'm gonna click increments towards our final goal, which is getting in here and laying down. So I'm gonna put my box down and we'll see what Finn will offer me to click. And because I'm a clicker trainer, we're going to set up the environment so that he's likely to be successful, right? So what I have done is I put the box really close and, oh, that was kind of an awkward click. Then I'm going to put the box really close to me so that he has to notice it kind of on his way back to me. And then I have also, good, notice that I have used a box that is very easy for him to get into. Okay, it's short, it's wide, it's, you know, it's a big box that's very little. So it's nice and easy. Good job. And so you'll notice that what I did there to help encourage some movement a couple moments ago is I put my treat in the box. 
and it encouraged him to get in there to get his treat, and it gave him a new idea of behaviors that he could offer. So now we're all ready to get in the box and sit and lay down. Good job, buddy. And with clicker training, or with shaping, excuse me, what we like to do is once we start to reinforce the next criteria on our shaping staircase here, we stop reinforcing the behavior or the increments below it. Although Finn is getting a little bit confused, so I am going to take a step back and click him a couple times just for being in the box. And now we'll see if he can offer me a sit again. So this is going very quickly. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to give his brain a break and I'm going to explain a couple of things to you and then we'll do another session. So one thing is like I was just talking about, treat placement can help you. So in the beginning, I was throwing my treat out of the way to encourage movement, to get him to move and potentially interact with the box. Then I threw one treat into the box, which encouraged him to step in for the first time. So I do use treat placement to my advantage to help encourage movement or in a moment to help encourage stillness as soon as we want him to actually stay in the box. Then what we did, you know, I clicked when he put the foot in, then I clicked as he was walking through. Then we started to wait and see, okay, now that you're stepping into the box, what else can you offer me? Now this went really quickly and it went really quickly because Finn has been raised with a clicker. He understands he needs to offer behavior and he understands that he needs to interact with the object in front of me. So if your dog is new to clicker training, it may take a little bit longer and that's completely okay. So if you're new to clicker training, definitely download our clicker training ebook because it's going to explain what clicker training is, why it's helpful, whether or not you need to use a clicker or if you can just use a word. And it is also going to give you the best and most important um, first exercises to play to introduce your dog to the clicker itself and the clicker training concepts. So now that Finn seems to be very comfortable getting in and out of the box, he's even offered me his sit and his down a couple of times, I'm going to get the box back out and I'm going to take a couple steps backwards. So now in our second shaping session, instead of going immediately to where we were a moment ago, I am going to take a step backwards and reinforce him just for getting in the box. I'm not necessarily going to wait for a sit. We're going to reinforce that a couple of times, getting in the box, then we'll reinforce sitting in the box a couple of times, and then I'll wait to see if he'll lay down. And then I'll reinforce the down a couple of times. And then that's when we'll move into staying in the box. So in this demonstration, we are shaping getting a behavior. So getting him to get in and lay down in the box. But we can also shape for time. So we can shape, you know, sit in the box for one second, sit in the box for three seconds, sit in the box for 10 seconds, up until we get to, you know, sit in the box for 20 minutes if I want. We can also shape for distance. So if you're teaching your dog to heal, you know, first is can your dog heal for one step? Now can he heal for two steps? So shaping is everywhere. If you really pull your training apart, even if you don't know you're shaping, shaping is really imp an important concept in dog training to be able to pull a behavior into smaller pieces and train those smaller pieces. All right, so I'm gonna have Finn move and I'll put my box out again. Good. to reinforce him for sitting and he did not sit he didn't offer me a sit he offered me a down and I clicked anyway because what he did was he just he skipped a stair on the shaping staircase but it brought me closer to my goal and so I decided to reinforce it anyway now this brings up another point as to why it's important to create a shaping plan or a shaping staircase because if you don't know what the whole staircase looks like and your dog starts to skip steps on you, you're not necessarily going to know where you're going. So planning is really, really important. All right, so we're going to give this another try. So now I'm sure he'll do the down. <laughs> then I'll start to give him some treats for staying in the box. Oh, sorry, was that a little scary? So now that I want him to actually stay in the box and be still, I'm going to start handing him the treat so that I can encourage
encourage some calmness and some stillness. nutshell and it was a very fast shaping demo because Finn is a very fast puppy who likes to offer behavior a lot and you can like I said you can shape anything that your dog is physically and mentally capable of doing can be shaped so download our ebook so that you have a copy of a shaping staircase and so that you know how to introduce your dog to the clicker if you haven't already and then you can try shaping with your dog and is definitely worth it for a service dog. So a couple of the questions that we get a lot are, are um, you know, is shaping worth it? Which is something that I already kind of addressed. And I think that it is because of all those benefits that you get. And we also get people who ask us, um, how do you know when to lure? So this is luring, right? Where I, and he probably won't even lure because he has too much other, yeah, he won't lure <laughs> because he has had too many self-control games around food. But a lure is where I would put the treat right in front of his nose and then kind of move the treat around to get him to do a behavior. Um, we also have capturing, which we talked about last week, which is where you wait for a behavior to happen and then mark and reinforce it. And then we have shaping, which we just did today. And we're going to talk about targeting next week and how to use a target to get behaviors. So how do you choose, you know, do you lure a behavior, do you shape a behavior, do you target a behavior? And a lot of times there's a lot of overlap between them, really. Um, so even with a lure, you could still be using shaping underneath it. Um, but I really recommend using shaping most of the time because of all the benefits that come with it. So especially with a young service dog, as I've said before and I will say again, how you train something is far more important than what you train in the beginning. So these guys have been with us almost eight weeks now. And we have really, our focus has been on making sure they understand the shaping process and the targeting process. And we do that because then behaviors like what I just did go really fast because they already understand the process. So, and then there's the whole cue process, adding a cue, which is something we'll talk about in another video in a few weeks once we get past targeting. So how do you know which one to use, right? And um, personally, we will use targeting for a variety of reasons, which we'll talk about next week. We use shaping primarily because of all the benefits that come along with it. And we will lure a dog occasionally, um, generally for two reasons. One would be if I'm looking for a very specific movement that a lure might help. Kate, will you stand up? Okay. So for, just for example, because we also, you know, I have worked with competition dogs in the past, if I want a dog to lay down and do a fold back down like that, where their elbows go down first and then the rest of them go down, I would lure, I might lure that just to get the physical mechanic that I want. Okay, can you sit? Come here. I don't know if you both come down to a sit. Come here. I know. Um, versus the normal down where they sit and then they come down after that. So I would lure in that situation. Um, I will also lure, especially a puppy, if I just need to move them. So if we're working on healing and they've gotten all wrapped up, I might use a lure just to put them back where I want them to be if, until they understand targeting. And targeting is something that we actually use to move our dogs a lot. So if, if Finn is over here, but I need him over here, you know, I can do a hand target and he can come touch my hand and now I can get him to move where I want him to move. But we're going to talk about targeting next week. So if you guys have any questions at all about shaping, then make sure to throw them in the comments and we will answer them for you. Like this video and share it anywhere that you think people might find it helpful and download the ebook because that will help you guys a lot as well. And remember, we are live on Facebook uh, every week at noon, most weeks, unless we have a huge technical glitch, which we are still working our way through. Um, so if you have questions and you want to hit us up live, then Mondays at noon on our Facebook page is the time to do it. So I will see you guys next week and we're going to talk about targeting.